Listen, listen, listen. Let's drop attic the same time we jump in big window. We're gonna go hard here, okay? Is everybody ready? All right, we're going to drop attic, going big window right now. Three, two, one. Hold my top wide. I'm planting. Okay, underneath, underneath. One's coming wide. One big window, one coming wide. Calm down. In this video, we'll be discussing why fine-tuning your in-game communication in Rainbow Six Siege is an important part of the game. If you're not communicating quickly and effectively throughout the course of a round, this may be helpful to streamlining how to work with your team. General callout order, wear, operator, and help. When giving callouts on enemy positions, remember this simple order. Location, operator, help. When giving information, location has the biggest priority as your teammates need to know where the danger is. The operator doesn't quite matter yet, nor does that. Operator is next. It'll indicate the gadget or secondary gadget. For example, Valkyrie has black eye cameras that can be used to gain additional information and she usually also brings a C4 as her secondary gadget. Relaying the operator in the callout is vital so your teammates understand the importance of what utility can be used against. One of the few exceptions would be a pulse, as he is, or should be, 90% of the time below you. So it's just saying, pulse below is a great danger callout for a vertical C4. Lastly, mention how much health they have. Of course, this is circumstantial. If the enemy is full health, maybe you don't need to mention it, but if they're half health, or perhaps if they're one point away from death, now this information could matter to future engagements for your teammates. Use your best judgment to determine when this should be included or not. You really can't go wrong one way or another. Talk, is this necessary for me to share and say, and does it provide any real value? Is what you're about to say actually valuable? Remember, whenever somebody is talking, that means you cannot hear the in-game sound as well. And that's crucial for sound cues, such as a flank or a C4. Know when to say what you want to say. If you're going for a direct side attack, don't be screaming about a player halfway across the map. That's not important. Instead, you can say, guys, hit the side fast. Two guys roaming or side is weak. It's quick and it's simple and it gets the point across without cluttering the communication. Yellow stairs example. Being specific with your callouts is super crucial. Lots of locations can be spread into separate callouts so you know exactly what to look for or where to look at. So things like this doesn't happen. Flying in yellow stairs. All friendlies have been eliminated. Spreading yellow stairs into four different callouts based on where you are in the staircase can help make sure that this does not happen very often. We're gonna be using sandwich. Exit, Yoda, and Yellow for this demonstration. Starting with Sandwich, it's a common position when attacking basement bombsite and it's important area to control. Plus, it's the basement element of the staircase. Number two, Exit. That's the door on Yellow stairs, but it's also a runout and a spawn peak. So this callout of Exit is multifunctional as it covers all three bases. Thirdly, we got Yoda. Well, Yellow Stairs Soda. It's a shortened version of the soda machine on first floor Yellow Stairs, but it's very specific. So, Yoda. And lastly, you have Yellow. Yellow to me is simply just the top of the staircase. It could be on the platform, or it could be at the very top, typically where defenders play on a top floor defense. But the most important part is that Yellow indicates the upper area of the staircase, Yoda indicates the first floor of the staircase, and exit and basement indicates the bottom part of the staircase. So by knowing which area the enemy is on, you can turn your crosshair adequately and cover the correct area of the map with confidence. And the comparison from the first clip and then to this clip will show you why. Exit, exit, exit! Op 4 neutralized. Mission successful. Tone, range, emphasis to stand out when it's dire versus being casual. Monotone here is not good. Communication is almost like singing. The emphasis and tone of your voice is very important and contextual. If everything's said in a shouting manner, that makes everything seem urgent and super important. 
and we all know that's never actually the case. It's easy to get flustered in the middle of a round when there's a lot going on, but remember, clear comms is winning comms. If somebody is shouting, it should be to communicate a strategy or to get through a very important piece of information, whether it be a flank, hit the side, C4, guy roaming, whichever. Only use your volume when you absolutely have to. Then KS, you're gonna hot drop blue hatch and kill the guy in AK if so possible. AK. AK. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna execute when KS gets the AK kill. Let me drop it, guys. Get ready. You can't drop. You just hold it from church. That's fine. KS is gonna die and kill the guy in AK. When KS okay. kills the guy, we drop. Okay. So I just. Would, I, would, I would drop down. Yeah. Careful. One guy stay above. Stay high. Yeah. yeah, one guy stay. The rest drop. Okay, I can smoke as well. Drop AK, down, drop down. One church. One blue, one guy blue, one guy blue. Blue dead, blue dead. We chill, we chill, we chill. Hold the hold. Okay, I, I can plant. Let's go blue, let's go blue. Perfect, I'm planting. Halfway. Nice, boys. Perfect, perfect. Hierarchy, the order of who should speak, and when it's your turn. If you're in a team or playing with a full stack, have respect for everybody, but also understand in union who has priority, who is the leader, and who has a bunch of good ideas. Let that person guide the conversation, and if that's you, that's great. And if it's not you, don't worry. Just try and fill in the gaps that are that is needed because nobody can do it alone. And if your usual leader is quiet or having a difficult time, step up together to fill that gap. Do not let that fall on a single person. Uh, 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 outdoor, uh, outdoor. Yeah. Oh, that's the kind of a weird call there. Uh, four eliminated all all you said that was blah, 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 blah. like. Yeah. I need one guy to call, not two guys that can jam, and I need this thing to go call us there. So Zach was saying blah, 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 and Jam was saying pushing out, and I'm like... Ow, ow, ow. Also, repeat or refreshing callouts as it becomes relevant is extremely important. For example, say there's a roamer and you call it out in the beginning of a round when it's not super relevant. Refreshing that information later on when you can get flanked. Like, hey guys, there's still one roamer, or hey guys, I saw somebody earlier. Make sure to remind your teammates of possible enemy action or thank you for it later.